in the haste of relevancy and the urgency of this platform, I may have jumped the gun a little bit on that Switch Live video a few weeks back, but like I was already so much later than everybody else. I still stand by everything that I said in that video. I did have enough time with the Switch Lite to give accurate impressions. It's just that now, after using the Switch Lite out in the wild for a couple of weeks, I was able to address some of my concerns. And there are some new concerns that are worth mentioning. This is an update, if you will, an addendum. This is what you can expect after using this thing for a while. So I'll be honest, I got lazy and I had a bot write this video. So if it sounds weird, just blame it on the bot. After using the Nintendo Switch Lite for about three weeks now, it has provided some real entertainment. A wonderful game night was created on it every time, as was the perfect time to get a massage. I was able to play it for 10 minutes on my TV before my friends came in to watch a basketball game, and it was just as entertaining. Uh yeah, that's not worth the bit. This portable machine is awesome, and if you've been thinking about getting one just for it, or would like to give one a try, pick it up, check Amazon and Nintendo.com for the best deals. Also, please feel free to use the following affiliate link, click here for more info, and be happy. If you have questions slash comments, feel free to leave them below. Well, that did an almost good job. I've been enjoying my Switch Lite a lot. It's been my go-to Switch for playing outside of docked mode. So my OG Switch will be living a comfortable life of retirement in its dock for the rest of forever. I still play docked mode most of the time, but that Switch is probably never leaving that dock ever again. Sorry, buddy, you're just about an inch too big for me now. The major points and concerns are the same. The Joy-Con are attached, so some functionality in some games might not work so great, but almost all games will work just fine. You can't dock this thing at all, no matter how hard you try. So expect to use this as just a portable console. It's very comfortable in the hands. The joysticks are the same as they are on the Joy-Con, so drift could still happen. And if you intend to use the Switch Lite alongside of another Switch that you already have, it's going to be a major pain in the ass, but maybe not as big of a pain in the ass as I had previously thought. Yeah, you still need to make your Switch Lite your primary Switch console on the Nintendo eShop, which is a little bit annoying. Your secondary Switch console, in my case, my home Switch, will require an internet connection in order to play any of your digital games. If you only have physical games, then this isn't a concern to you. Go ahead and buy that Switch Lite you've been dreaming about. Me, on the other hand, all of my games were purchased digitally, so I'm not so lucky. Having that extra few seconds of loading time on my home console while the game verifies if I'm able to play it is a significant annoyance. It annoys me a lot more than it probably should. It's not so much that it takes an extra few seconds, it's that it takes an extra few seconds and I know I didn't do anything wrong. What do I have to prove here? Why am I proving anything? I'm not trying anything here, I'm just trying to play the game that I purchased for myself. Every time I load up a game, it's like I'm being accused of a crime I didn't commit. Yeah, sure, go ahead, fine, look through all my shit. I got nothing to hide. I plan on traveling to the Nihon during the launch of Pokemon Sword and Shield, and when I go there, I'm going to want to be able to capture footage. So I'm going to need to bring my original Nintendo Switch for its HDMI output. In order to be able to play my digital purchases from that console, I'm going to need to make it my primary Switch console again. You can do this a seemingly limitless amount of times from the console itself. If you do this from the eShop webpage, it only allows you to deregister a console once per year. Only do this if you've completely lost your Switch. The save data was probably the biggest concern of mine. The Switch automatically uploads new save data if you have it set up that way, which is fine and that's exactly how it should work. However, it does not automatically download new cloud save data, even while it's in sleep mode. It will automatically download updates and automatically download new games that you've purchased off the eShop, but it will not automatically download new cloud save data. So if you're playing games on your home Switch console and you wanna run out the door with your Switch Lite, you gotta first download all of the cloud save data for those games. This honestly isn't as bad as I thought. I haven't been in a scenario where I wanna run out the door with my Switch Lite and downloading the cloud save data just takes a few seconds per game. 
It's a minor inconvenience and honestly, it's not the end of the world. It works just fine. And on the cloud save data settings page, you can see all of the cloud saves that need to be downloaded. I also thought this whole process would be an easy way to introduce save file conflicts. Let's say that you go to play a game on a different switch and you forget to download the cloud save data first. If the cloud save data is always automatically uploading, then wouldn't this, wouldn't this be a problem? Luckily, the switch will warn you before you start the game that it detects a newer save file on the cloud. Except apparently it doesn't do this all of the time. It did it for me in the field when I was testing this thing, but now when I'm trying to film it for this video, it won't warn me. It knows there's a save file conflict, but it won't warn me. So beware. Make sure before you take your Switch Lite out of the house that all of the games that you wanna play have the updated cloud save data. It's a bit of annoying housekeeping, but you'll thank yourself in the end. Leaving the house with your Switch Lite is the problem. Coming home after using your Switch Lite is fine because the cloud saves automatically upload once the Switch Lite connects to your home internet, and my home Nintendo Switch is always connected to the internet anyway. So it's gonna warn me that there's a new save file detected. If you're leaving your house with your Switch Lite to go somewhere else that has an internet connection, then you don't have to worry about any of this. If it's your secondary Switch, it's going to verify that you're able to play all of those games, and it will warn you if there's a new save file detected. So if you're going to your friend's house with Wi-Fi, or your college campus with Wi-Fi, or your job with Wi-Fi, then you don't have to worry about any of this. I'm kind of just assuming that you're going on a flight or a long car ride. The PlayStation Vita had a great cross-save feature with the PS4 that would automatically upload and download new save files as long as either of those devices were on or in sleep mode. So as long as your device was connected to the internet, you will always have the most up-to-date save file. Cross-save was introduced in 2014, so Nintendo is now five years behind Sony on this. Freaking yikes, dude. I always leave my Switch Lite in sleep mode, so it will automatically download new updates and it will automatically download any new games that I purchase off of the eShop. It will die after a few days, maybe a week. So if you don't plan on playing it for a while, it might be worth it to leave it in sleep mode on a charger, not just in your backpack like I do. My favorite backpack gaming device has been the Pocket Go. I charged it once ever, and even when not in use, the battery seems to hold its charge for a long while. It's also super tiny, so you can forget it's there until you're bored on a long commute, and remember you have this thing floating around somewhere. So naturally, I've been keeping this and my Switch in my bag because I'm a child. The D-pad on the Switch Lite is great, however, the placement is not. I understand why it is where it is. From a design standpoint, there's not really much you could have done about that. The Satisfy Grip does help if you're home or have the room to pack a grip. Honestly, when playing Mario Maker out in the wild, I, found, I was on the toilet. I was on the toilet. Let's just be real here. I wasn't out in the wild. I found myself just sucking it up and using the thumbstick. It's really not the end of the world, and it's way more comfortable than using the D-pad. Maybe switch to the D-pad for more precise inputs, but the thumb cramps just aren't worth it in the long run. Another minor quirk that I neglected to mention in that last video is that the Switch Lite doesn't automatically adjust the brightness. So if you're playing out in the sun, you have to manually turn the brightness all the way up. Then if you decide to play it in bed later that night, you'll blind yourself and probably the neighbors across the street. my corneas. In a world where all of my devices automatically adjust the brightness, even slightly, this was a weird thing to come across. I know a lot of people who will always turn this feature off on their devices, but auto brightness saves a lot of battery life. It just seems like a weird thing to omit on the Switch Lite. Besides all the weird quirks, the Switch Lite has still become my go-to for playing the Switch portably. The caveats don't take away from all of the positives, like the compact form factor, the comfortable size, the upgrade to portability. I even had a decent time playing Smash Brothers on this thing. I would never have expected to play Smash Brothers online in portable mode. I didn't do good, but I still did it. 
So even though I have a perfectly functional original Nintendo Switch, I don't regret purchasing a Switch Lite. I like it way more for playing portably. Is it worth shelling out that extra $200 if you already have and are happy with your Nintendo Switch? Probably not. If you play in portable mode a lot, then it might be worth that slight upgrade. Otherwise, don't even worry about it. Your current Nintendo Switch does more than this thing can. I previously said that the Switch Lite is for people who don't have a Nintendo Switch and are going to play in portable mode 100% of the time. I would like to now amend my statement and say that it is also for people who currently have a Nintendo Switch and would like this for playing in portable mode most of the time and can also deal with all of the save data cloud backup situation and also have $200 burning a hole in their pocket. It's a niche market, but those people are out there. There is one other thing that I would like to update from that previous video. Nintendo made it seem like they were going to update their online service to make it easier for you to use the Switch Lite in tandem with another Nintendo Switch that you might have. They did not do this. And I equated this to how they promised that we were gonna get a multiplayer update in Mario Maker 2 so that you can play with friends. We never got that update until a week after I had posted that video. And then surprise, we got the multiplayer update for Mario Maker 2. Is it everything that we ever dreamed about? No, you can't boo levels, so half the levels are just garbage levels that don't work with multiplayer at all. But at least it gives me faith that Nintendo might update their online service, even if it's just a little tiny bit. Just let us download cloud saves automatically in sleep mode. That's it. Just a little tiny update is all we need. So what do you guys think now about the Nintendo Switch Lite? Is it something that you're interested in now that you've seen more content from me and I'm sure a bunch of other YouTubers? Maybe you have it yourself. Is there anything that you've discovered after purchasing it that surprised you? Leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. Of course, we got new videos and live streams all the time. Our schedules and a pinned tweet over on our Twitter. We got Wolf Den live every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube. And Twitch streams over on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you support us here on YouTube, we're over on Twitch. And you link those accounts to your Discord account. You get into our supporter-only Discord where you get private chat time with us. You get videos like this one early and you get to play multiplayer games with us at least once a month. You could do so by clicking that join button down below, or if you have Amazon Prime, you link it to your Twitch account, that's a free Twitch Prime sub that you're just wasting. But of course, the most important thing that you do and the easiest thing is just subscribe to the channel and also follow on Twitch. And share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe doesn't have a Switch and would like to get a Switch Lite or is thinking about getting a Switch Lite or has a Switch and plays mostly in portable mode. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week. Oh, and special thanks to Savas and Skunk Boy for winning that Switch Lite contest. Goodbye. Have a good week.